jacks in unison. Like, well, keep it going. See. Keep hey, it going. Good. I want to see those see jumping it. jacks. Again. One more yeah. time, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Only if the whole team. Only if the whole team does. It. The whole team. All right, ready? Let's go. I'm in. All right, guys. Hey, happy Friday. Happy Friday, man. It's uh, hey, we're live in. Uh, I know, like. Hey, where's da where's Damon at? I don't see him on stage here. Nicole. I miss Damon. I miss him. Damon, we miss you. We wish you were here with us. All we right, feel so a little lost without you, but we're we gonna do feel we'll, lost. We'll we'll find our find our way. But hey, you know, he's a South Dakotan, so like we're we're close. We're kind of in that direction today. So all right, all right. guys, happy Friday. Welcome to Manufacturing E-Commerce Success. Our dear, mm -hmm. our, my brother Damon Basoka is off traveling today. So Damon, we miss you. So I've got my partner in crime. I've got Nicole Donnelly here today. Nicole, happy Friday. How are you? Happy Friday. I'm doing good. I had a great week. Got to see you in the Windy City earlier this week, and we got to meet some amazing manufacturers, got to tour so many amazing facilities. So I'm like, I'm on cloud nine and we get to cap off our week having this amazing conversation with MT Solar. And uh, I'm just, I've been so fired up about this conversation because this configurator that they've built is incredible. So can't wait. I'm excited to dive in. This is super fun. Man, so. We're going to geek out hard today. So guys, happy Friday. Welcome to the program. And we've got Vicky here. John Baglino's here. So hey, John, happy hey, Friday John. to you. Hi, Vicky. Friend. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. So guys, drop us a note. Let us know that you're here. We're, we're with MT Solar. And let's do some introductions here. So let's go yeah. to Travis Jordan in my move into Montana, one of my favorite songs by Frank Zappa. So Travis Jordan, happy Friday. How are you, dude? <laughs> Doing wonderful. Thanks, Kurt. Well, hey, president, founder, brain, the, the genius behind MT Solar is here. So, Travis, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Man, are we, dude, we are going to geek out hard. My dear friend, Mike Henderson. Michael, how are you, brother? Good morning. Hi. Happy Friday. Yeah. It looks like I'm having a beer, but this is a kombucha, I swear. <laughs> I was wondering. I was going to ask, but I said, you know, I'll just roll with it. It's all good. Hey, it's after Friday. Good, good it's, after, Thank you. it's after 12 o'clock here. So, hey, we've got some great folks here. So, hey, Abigail's here today. We've got, hey, we've got Dr. Kapandender. I don't know if I said that right, but hey, welcome, guys. Drop a note. Let us know that you're here. Amy Seriego. Amy, how are you, my friend? Hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So, all right, guys, let's just dig right in. So MT Solar, Nicole, let's, we have a lot to cover. You Lots. guys, you do not want to go anywhere. We're going to go through a full blown demonstration. If you're a manufacturer and you're kind of thinking, man, I've been hearing about configurators or you, you're like, man, that word is new to me. We're like, Hey, could our customers actually create their own product on our website? Yes, they, they can. can. Nicole, take it away. Yes, I have to say when I when Mike just first showed me this auto designer several months ago, like literally my jaw was dropping to the floor. It was amazing. I was like, the first thing I thought is there are so many manufacturers out there that need to see this so they can actually visualize for themselves how this is possible because it is. And so I'm just super excited to talk to Travis about what you guys have built because to build a 100 percent you know, e-commerce B2B business is pretty remarkable. And it's just such a great example to all those folks who are thinking, can this be done? Yes, it absolutely can. So let's talk about it. Travis, I would love to hear a little bit more about your journey. How did you, you know, I know you've been an installer, a solar panel installer for, for many, many years, but what brought you into this industry and what was it that just led you to start this company, you know, nearly 10 years ago? Absolutely. Yeah. My folks were off-grid solar users before I was born. So <laughs> I grew up uh, doing solar and battery calculations uh, along with my fourth grade math and, and later. So it was kind of a natural evolution from there of wanting to learn a little bit more about solar and about electrical. Um, my dream was always when I grew up, I want to be an electrician. Um, oh. I want to be a solar installer when I was done. So yeah, I went on from there and, and got my electrical licenses and started doing installs pretty much right along with my apprenticeship uh, from day one. And this was North Idaho, rural, backcountry, mm. long, ways, long ways from nowhere. We were two miles up a floor service road, unmaintained. And so my customers were much the same all across the Northwest, uh, very rural areas. And we just drug a lot of equipment, load it up however you can, drag it in. I mean, not quite pack train, but close. I mean, it was, it was brutal. And, and you get equipment in there, you're 
you're a long ways from a hardware store and then you're trying to put equipment together and you're trying to get home for supper or staying overnight or a couple of days to get the job wrapped up. Um, so I did end up moving to Montana to run electrical contracting business and continued to do solar installs throughout the Northwest and, and mm -hmm. in Montana then as well. Same in, same scenario. They call it the big sky country for a reason, long ways between points, one of the least populated states in the union. And as we kept doing that, we just, we just struggled a lot with mounting structures. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense in treed areas in, in, rough country to put solar on the roofs of these cabins or, or they need more. It's not uncommon to need more solar than you can fit on a roof. And so pole mounted solar, ground mounted solar became very common for the off grid community for many, many decades now. And so as we would install those, we needed high ground clearance because we're trying to clear wildlife. We're trying to clear snow. We're trying to deal with all of that. And we needed, uh, we needed to be out where we weren't getting shading. So it's going to be a ways away from the house. And that's just all the things we were struggling with. And I was just fighting it. I, I could get a concrete truck to come up and drop the concrete. That wasn't a terribly big deal. Excavation contractors weren't a big struggle, but then when it came time to do the actual pole setting, mm -hmm. I was kind of at a quandary. I either had to bring a lot of guys and do a lot of scaffolding and it's uneven ground and it became unsafe mm -hmm. and a real challenge, or you could kind of fly under the, under the wire and, and kind of take your life in your hands and wonder if you're going to make it home for supper. Uh, <laughs> oh, or you can hire cranes and bring cranes in, but yeah. now we're talking pretty big pieces of equipment that are not as used to being off the beaten track and cost a lot of money to, to transit out there, you know, two hours from nowhere. Um, it just was really brutal. And mm -hmm. as we moved into bigger jobs, we did the first, uh, we did the largest job in the state of Montana, I think a couple of times in a row there. The first one was the Missoula parking structure. Wow. Uh, that we, you know, landed a bunch of large mounts up there. And so we ended up having to fabricate those ourselves because there wasn't really anything available to meet what we needed. There was conventional pole mounts, but this kind of had some custom stuff to it. And my fabrication guys were there with me. Um, we were kind of already toying with some manufacturing actually over in the, in the oil field had been for a couple of years, some heavy structural steel was just a different business as an entrepreneur. I had started up. Um, this is separate sure. from your electrician contracting. Yeah. Work that you're doing. By the bug. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So we were looking at that and it's like, well, this solar pole mounting needs to get, needs to get fixed. I, I'm fighting in the field. I know other people are fighting in the field, kind of self-defense. We need to do something better. And so we, we all kind of put our thinking caps on and came up with this hoisting solution that we've been able to patent and, and, you know, a lot of rounds of uh, changes later, we ended up with what we have today, which is a, a hoistable solution that can be installed in, I don't know, maybe a quarter, maybe less of the man hours with no cranes, no other equipment. Uh, very, very quick and easy. And we hear that, I think, almost every day of our sales team gets a, gets a comment about how quick and easy it is. Um, yeah. That's oh my gosh. Part. And I, I completely agree. You know, Amy and I had a chance to talk to some of your customers um, and that they just raved about just how easy this product is. And it really is quite remarkable. So kudos to you for so innovating good. and creating something so, you know, groundbreaking, really. I mean, I think it's just such a great product. So innovative that you were able to come up with this. And when you, in, when you created this product, was that when you officially launched MT solar? Was that like when yeah. you, once you designed it, you, you found, you got the patent. You're like, this is it. We're going all in on this. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. My third daughter was born actually while we were installing the, the parking structure array. I ended up bringing a couple of the guys down and they were uh, starting to, and I got the call and, and wow. then I heading home to, for that and left them there with their lunch boxes and they had to finish that up. But yeah, so I was, I was 10 years ago and we've been chasing that through, you know, that, that was the inception of, of Montana solar right there. Well, my gosh. Awesome. Hey, Nicole, we've got a few comments. So Michael is coming off a of six month LinkedIn hiatus. Michael, welcome Michael. back. Dude. Are there only GT, GPT bots left? That's a great question. <laughs> hey, we've got somebody from Sorry, Turkey. So we've got Mohammed from Turkey <laughs> coming in. We've got Colin from Kenya. We've nice. got Whitney Houston's in the house here today. Whitney, nothing but love for you, my friend. Thank you for joining us here. So we've got Jeffrey. We've got, hey, Val's in the house today. Val, hey, I Val, know. happy Friday to you. We've got Mohammed. So, hey, great. Guys, drop us a note. Let us know you're mm -hmm. out there. We're with MT Solar, Montana Solar, and we've got Travis Jordan, Mike Henderson here. Nicole, let's keep the party rolling. 
Yeah, and I just want to say, Michael, I promise we're real. There's no chat bot. I'm a real person. These are all, this is real deal here. We'll okay? do jumping jacks again if you make us, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So let's talk about e-commerce. When you started the business and you had, you know, you patented this, this remarkable system, did you know right away, right out of the gate, you're like, I want to just sell this purely through the website? Or did you have offline sales channel? What did that process look like when you... Had first yeah, started the I've company. Always and how did you the transition? Of, of working closely with the customer. And a lot of that comes with mm -hmm. like the nail it, scale it mentality. You kind of need to know what you're dealing with and you need that fast feedback loop. And so the closer you can get yeah. to your customer. And I resonated so much with our customers because they were solar installers like me. I mean, a lot of them were my colleagues. We we saw each other at the NABSEP shows. We saw each other at the at the conventions that we would go to for vendors and and so it just made more sense to me to reach out and visit with them rather than, you know, go through this distributor model. And we did have distributors when we started up, but it still, it seemed like the, our distributors were always an impediment to our sales process rather than a help. They, they maybe brought us together, but to carry on the conversation, it, there was so much we could do for the customer that was being impeded by the number of people involved in the channel. And, Mm. we wanted to better serve our customers. And that's, that was the whole innovation we had designed was to speak to those customers, not to speak to our distributors. And so many manufactured items are made to please distributors. They're made to please stocking numbers or to, to please mm. ease of stocking on shelves. We didn't create our products for stocking. We created our products to, for the ease of installation for our customer. So we wanted to reach those customers and visit with them and interact with them directly. And that's what drove me right away within a couple of years to say, hey, let's create an e-commerce space for this. And it was it was before its time. Yeah. Most of our customers weren't interested in spending you know, multiple thousands of dollars on an on a, online. It was too new eight, eight or mm -hmm. 10 years ago. But I just, you know, kind of forged on and said, well, we're going to have our salespeople use the same system that our customers are using. And mm. by doing that, we could make sure the system stayed updated and clean. And it allowed my sales team to be distributed. We were doing remote work long before the remote work fad. We had people working all over the country and it just made it really simple for us. And for me as well, I, I love to bounce around all over the country and work on projects and work remotely. And I didn't want to be, you know, nailed down to servers and, and conventional supply chain discussion. So that's kind of what drove the whole e-commerce thing. And it took it a lot of years, but we're finally there now where our customers are aligned with us and agree that it's, it makes sense to do it. So. Yeah. I love that vision that you had that even though your customers weren't ready, you knew that that was going to be the future and you forged ahead, as you mentioned. And I think it was really smart the way that you actually had your sales team using it so that they could be, you know, so that it became part of your whole internal process so mm -hmm. that as your sales team was using it, then you could help your customers adopt to that platform. Because anytime you're going through a digital transformation, I've seen it time and time again with customers that you have to, there's a lot of training and adoption that needs to happen internally for the, everyone to get on board. And I think by you doing it that way, I think that's, that's a really great for anyone listening out there who's considering it. That's a really great way to kind of baby step it is, you know, maybe your customers may not be quite ready, but go for it anyways, and just get your internal team on board and using it from a sales perspective. So that's really cool. Well, I want to turn it over to Mike. Okay, Mike Henderson. So Mike Henderson, you know, I, I think it's, you know, let, a, there's definitely been an evolution here with e-commerce. You started out as, as Travis mentioned, and it seems like over time, you've evolved to really build this really cool configurator. And I think it would be great to like dive into that now and maybe showcase kind of like where MT Solar is now in that e-commerce journey. You know, you've been doing this now for almost 10 years. It sounds like eight years at least that you've been doing e-commerce and now just recently really building out this really cool configurator. And I think it'd be great for you to showcase to everyone here what you've built. And then we can talk more about your background because after we <laughs> dive into the tool. You're not off the hook, Mike. I don't, don't you worry. We're going to, we're going to put the spotlight on you, but let's, okay. let's talk about this amazing auto designer. So, sure. okay. Let's, let's take it. So this is where we are now. If you log into our website and you, you know, you have an account, uh, you can get access to this tool and mm -hmm. you know, this is a significant upgrade from what we were doing before, you know, this is, this does a lot of, a lot of things for, for us and our customers. So, 
from. This is this is the the basic layout that you see when you go to our configurator, and um, what what you see here is a, a lot of inputs here on the side that are related to a project, and so just kind of to back up a little bit about our our product, we uh, manufacture the structure that these solar solar panels sit on, and um, it's on a pole, it's off of the house, and there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, but there's also, it's also a giant uh, sail that's out there in the, in the wind, and, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things about that that, um, that need to be considered when you, when you put one of these up. So our customers will come to this designer, and at this point, they should have an idea of their project, where the location is, the installation address, the type of modules that they want to mount on. When I say modules, uh, a lot of people are familiar with solar panels and solar mm -hmm. modules. Those terms are used interchangeably. So. Yep. They'll know the they'll know the type of modules that they're going to put on here, and this is all made to order for them on, based on the conditions at their site, the size of the modules they're using, etc. And so, here on the left side, you'll see there's there's a lot of inputs for the configurator, um, the address, the module sizes, how big this thing is going to be, and as you change these, um, you can see. It's amazing. We'll kind of see it grow live. And it's like you know, all in real time. Look at that. As you get to a bigger one, you, now you need two poles. And you can adjust the tilt. Depending on where you are in the country, you might need a different tilt to optimize your, your collection. Um, and you can adjust the ground clearance off of the, we call it front edge ground clearance. And that's kind of off of the end here where the front of the array sits how how high it is and then there's some other things exposure you know depending if you're in out on next to a lake or maybe you're in the city um, that can affect things and so forth so let's just take a moment here i mean this is incredible in like in real time you are you are you are configuring your solar panel system like this is a really pretty amazing that your installers i mean just think about the speed and how quickly they're able to get the information that they need and we all know that buyers today it's all about how quickly can you get what i need and how you know and the detail here too i think is pretty remarkable that they are able to see so i just want to i mean like i've seen my share of ecom websites and in b2b this is this is pretty special so i i, I feel like i have to take a moment when i first saw this my head was like exploding I was well, so excited. Couple, hey we've got yeah. a couple comments in the chat yeah. box and one thing i mm -hmm. in, in Travis, you dropped a bomb earlier. And again, like mm -hmm. guys, is, is your, is your, you know, and it doesn't matter what, what profession you're in, you know, we're, 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 we're speaking to manufacturers here, you know, what Travis said, the closer you can get to the yeah. customer, he used yes. the word simple, use the word easy. I want to get ahead, you know, like mm -hmm. the customer didn't even realize that they needed this, but to have the foresight to make this as simple, but make the buying process as simple as possible. And I tell you, Nicole, what we always love to preach, how can you help that ideal buyer make a buying decision on a Friday night at yes. midnight without having to wait for you to open up your door on a Monday morning. And that's exactly what uh, Travis and Mike did. But hey, we've got Paul here. Happy Friday to you, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Kyle says, this is such a cool <laughs> tool, Kyle. I couldn't agree more. Whitney Houston says, this is such a powerful feature for customers. Yes. Michael, let's keep the party rolling, my friend. All right. <laughs> keep it going. So I've, I've loaded up a, a test run here for one of our most common um, products and configurations and this we call this a top 12 it's it's 12 solar panels on this pole and um you can kind of turn those on and off if you want to see the actual structure or not you kind of have a couple of a couple of check marks here so once you get everything entered for your project then um you know you kind of get a feedback down here as to what that mm. is going to equate to we have you know the height and the size of it and some of this so they get this instant feedback like how much space is this going to take up in my yep. customer's yard? And, you know, what, what is it going to look like? And, and some of these other things. And so it's a, it's, it's a really, it's a really great tool for them. And um, so now the next step of this process, once they kind of have this figured out and they, they know what they want, uh, we're going to run some engineering checks on this. And this is specific to their location. It's going to pull the, 
wind speed that's in this location and the snow load and, and we're going to test it live. So that's the next step. We hit this green button over here and we're going to go out and query uh, a lot of engineering that's well beyond <laughs> what I comprehend. And I'll, <laughs> Travis can tell you more about how this Yeah, works. Travis, right. tell us about what went into this because it sounds like it's it's pulling in that information locally, which just I can't imagine how much data that has to be available to be able to pull that in. So while yeah. Mike is running this, can you walk us through that that engineering process and what that was like when you were building out the requirements for this tool, how you're able to build that into this to this um, configurator? Yeah, big shout out here for SkySiv. That's the engineering software we're using. And Sam is one of the founders of that. He's down in Sydney, Australia. I sent him a link. He may even join today. Uh, and he and his partner started SkySiv from the same frustrations that we've all seen with automation, that the engineering processes seemed flawed to, to them as they got out of school, got into, into the engineering mainstream. And so they wanted to see ways to streamline engineering in general. And so what you're going to see here is in about, oh, you know, 30 seconds, we're going to complete an, an entire engineering review using completely automated API calls from SkySiv, including FEA analysis, finite element analysis, uh, wind checks, snow checks, um, ASCE code checks. If you stack all the code books up that we just ran through, you're looking at almost an eight inch to a foot tall stack of code books that are updated every wow. few years. And we just went through all of those that pertained. And there, there's a probably a 30 or 40 page report of engineering hand calcs that's behind what was just created there. And it's gonna get saved as a PDF when uh, Henderson goes on through to get an instant quote. So this configurator is actually doing mostly engineering at this phase. And we're gonna go on to the next phase and actually show you more visualization of what the actual design was. But that was one of the biggest challenges we had is it's easy to say this is the size of rack, but many, Actually, many engineers told me it's it's not reasonable, proper, right, ethical to allow a customer to do design intent themselves. They they haven't been trained for this. They haven't mm -hmm. had the experience for this. Well, instead, I was able to work with Sam there at SkySiv and hack that and say, well, let's just uh, take all the variables out for them. And yes, it still does need to be, you know, from most jurisdictions stamped. So then we work with engineering firms to take the report that this generates and this tool, which is now a, a very constrained tool that does the same checks every time, which are the same checks an engineer does. And most of the work an engineer does nowadays is software work. So they're able to basically shortcut all of that, have the, the software just chain all the checks they're gonna do anyway together, and then take that report, submit it to the engineering firm who's comfortable with, with SkySiv as a software company, they can review the report and verify that, yes, you know, again, chat GPT. Yes, we put <laughs> eyes on the target and we are okay with what is happening here. There's nothing, no monkey business going on. And 99% of the time, the project can just proceed, which yeah. makes it huge for our customers. 11 o'clock at night, I always yes. like to say, as a solar installer, I wanted to be able to get on at 11 o'clock at night, yeah. figure out what I needed and order it or at least get a quote on it so that I could go to the dinner table the next morning, you know, this two hours away, and I could sit down at the at the, or I mean at the at the kitchen table with the customer and go over this proposal. So that's what this was driven around. Hey, I mean, Travis, I'm I'm sorry, Nicole. Yeah. Let's, let's hit a couple comments real real quick. So Val, I know Val, you're she's loving this because she's she says configurators for the win. And Dale's here today. Dale, thank you for joining us. This is very resourceful. But Travis, we have a great question here from our dear friend Whitney down in Houston. We call her Whitney Houston. Can you talk about whether you had any fear of adding a configurator to your site? I know some manufacturers mm -hmm. will hesitate because they don't want to give away give away their secret sauce. Whitney, awesome. That's a drop the mic question. It right? is. Yeah, it's yeah, a very common your, thing. And, and again, I love your relentlessness. What's your thoughts on that question right there? Yeah, I mean, for me, I've always believed in open source as much as possible. So early on, I guess my thought was, I the, the originally the engineers wouldn't give us any information. And so mm -hmm. I actually went through the code books and wrote a simple hacked calculator that was a spreadsheet based. <laughs> Wow. And I posted it to the website using my own calculations that I worked through. And the engineers accused me of plagiarizing their work. And I says, uh-uh, 
I used a different method than you did. So it ain't plagiar plagiarizing. <laughs> Look at that tenacity. <laughs> beat my way through it. And I posted that and it caused the engineers a little bit of heartburn. But I said, you know what? Right now, my customers are having to make things up because they yeah. don't have all the data they need. We can't wait for all this information. I would rather get good data into my customers' hands to make good decisions. And we've just always believed that if we do our job right, we can stay ahead. Uh, if someone else wants to come along behind, good for them. Yes. Uh, open source what you can because there's there's plenty of good people out there <laughs> we can stay uh, ahead. <laughs> i just I love so. that mentality so much because so many times i've heard in this conversation how close you're staying to your customer and what they need and that's just so key the closer you can stay to your customer you're going to be eons ahead of your competitor always yeah. and as long as you're really right there in front of them i think that's great how much time would you estimate that this this has sa is saving your customers by having all of this engineering built in for this configurator. What would you what would you what you, would you estimate the time savings would be? It costs them a little bit of time up front, but it saves yeah. them time when you know on about uh, we were seeing way too many. I mean, even if it was at 15, 20 percent or 30 percent of our customers would get through a design that we kind of approximated, you know, just use yeah. basic hacks and approximated out what they were going to need. Um, using rules of thumb, you know, general tables, which is pretty common in the manufacturing world or the distributor world, especially. And then they would get to permitting and the permitting office would would refuse it and now has to go back to engineering. And it ends up being a huge snafu. So maybe it costs them a little bit of time up front to run the configuration, but they're getting it. They're getting good data rather than yeah. um, hacked, made up data. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Awesome. Let's keep it going. Right. Kurt. So we've, we've run the, what we call the pre-engineering. And um, one of the features of this configurator is that uh, it starts with kind of the, the lowest duty, the smallest size necessary to fit the situation and tests to see if that works. And if that doesn't work, it bumps it up, you know, which, which will increase the expense, but it keeps the, keeps the cost, you know, at, at at the minimum that they need for their site. And so you can see we have this utilization now at 78%. So that means we're, we're, we're under underutilized. We, we have plenty to, to give in the, the wind and snow. So we're ready to now get our, our quote. So this is the next step of the process. So I'll, I'll click on this and this takes a little, takes a little time. This is where a lot of our secret sauce is going to come out because now we're going to create a 3d model that, is really detailed and, and and the customer can really zoom in and see what they're getting. So um, we, we pass this off to a different part of our tech stack that creates this. How long did it take you guys to design and develop this configurator? Like what was that process like? Oh my gosh, look at this. This is cool. Now we have oh. a 3d model. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's taken us a long time. It's, I mean, it, we, I don't know. We're always working, working progress, on it. right? Yes. We're, yeah. We're done yet. Yeah. 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 And I think that's a good point. Like, it's always a work in progress, right? It's never done. There's always, and I think that's with e commerce, anyone who's thinking about it, like it's an evolution, right? Mm -hmm. What would you recommend to someone who's thinking about it that would help them in their journey as they're, as they're starting to think about building something like this? Do you have any like recommendations from mistakes maybe that you made or things that you would have done differently if you were to do it over again? I don't know. I would say set up yourself to fail early and then mm. don't prepare to mod to, to put things in more, more modules if possible mm. and to link them together. But, you know, always think about redundancy options, ways to work your way around, you know, when this process fails, don't look for your solution to be finished. Uh, try to find ways to launch early and then capitalize on the things that you, your customers and your suppliers have available. Keep your mind really open as far as what, what meets your need. Like it's, it's all about laser focus on your end goal and your end goal, not being the tech end goal you want, but your customers need is really where you have to focus yeah. because there's a lot of ways to configure a system and, there's a quote I heard one time that says simplicity and the right answer is the valley on the far side of the mountain of complexity. <laughs> I have always found it so. It is impossible to get a simple configuration or sales process or manufacturing solution without first climbing over the mountain range of complexity in between. 
<sighs> but do not be discouraged by that nasty climb and that nasty point at the top above tree line where <laughs> everybody thinks you're an idiot, nobody likes what you're doing, and it's horrible. As long as you keep your eye on the goal and you can survive long enough, you'll get to the simplicity on the other side and you'll find some some beautiful space there. It's <laughs> 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 all right, so Kurt. Nicole, all right, we Business. Travis, we gotta go, we gotta call a timeout on that one, dude. Like that was <gasps> dude, that was like a total drop. That's drop a mic. Out. That wasn't even a, a drop mic drop. That was like a moment of silence right there. So <laughs> we do have a couple comments here. I'm gonna pull up and so hey, Whitney again. The failure, failure to understand putting the time up front once. Yeah, and then reaping the rewards. God bless you, Whitney. What a great line! And Michael, uh, all right, Travis, you ready for this one? Michael's asking a couple of great questions here. And hey, and Gary Woods here. Gary, dude, Gary, God, Gary thank God you're here because you're you are man. We are having a blast here. But Michael asks a great question here. I guess you had to customize the Sky Civ rule engine a bit so that it conforms to code specifics of your design. Part one. Two, is SkySiv capable of producing manufacturing drawings and or CNC code to uh, tool pass? So from e-commerce manufacturers. I spend all day on this. You are so into my little love space right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep Michael, it. You guys need to connect. Travis and Michael. Travis and Michael. Travis, I mean, yeah, yeah, Travis and Michael, you guys need to connect. But uh, Travis, what are your... Yeah. You, Michael speaking your love language. What do you think of that comment there? Let's keep it really quick on this. Uh, the unfortunate fact is that there is no such thing as the perfect tool. So don't try to go do all your work with a crescent wrench. Even though it might meet everything, you might be able to beat things into submission with a crescent wrench. You might be able to turn nuts and you might be able to do other things, but there are right tools for the job. And unfortunately, I have had to learn that that is the fact. So, uh, yes, SkySiv will work with you. Uh, they have a great team to uh, develop that whole piece. And Sam over at SkySiv developed a, a great company and a great team. We started with him early on and, and he's still doing a great job. And I promise to give him a shout out on this because he... His team of developers do a great job and they will customize that for you. Sky Civs Engineering. And this is where I talk about modular. Unfortunately, no one, and I, no, I'm going to say fortunately. Fortunately, no one has an all-in-one solution because it would cripple us if we tried to go down that road. There's my brutal statement for the day. The only way to be nimble and to, to stay clean on this is to make sure your division of responsibilities it becomes okay here's an analogy for you it becomes the same as the ceo or the founder of a company who refuses to let go and delegate mm. and he tries to do it all himself that's what it would be to have one software try to own every piece of the stack it doesn't work so you, mm. this is a raw opinions and someone may argue with me oh well i can buy this multi-bazillion dollar software and it might do it but in my opinion i still don't think they will because when every time i've tried it doesn't work skysev excels at engineering they kind of do okay at visualization but that's not really their space they're doing a good enough job to get it crude henderson flip that model so we're looking at the back side of that i wish we could swing back to the skysev one too while we're at it but configure here is who we're using now and configure is handling the 3d uh, visualization and we're doing this based on a stripped down gltf model which is different than the raw data that skysiv needs which is more or less a line model and has no raw geometry data skysiv doesn't need all the geometry information that uh is needed for visualization you, you can tell the pole cap stripped out a bunch of stuff stripped out we don't need it configure needs all the pretty pictures but we've got to keep it simple Configures who's doing our uh, 3D rendering at this time, doing a great job, custom build for us, very economical solution. Um, they're an offshore company and they're trying to you know, carve their way into the space. But when you go over cam and manufacturing, we run on shape for that. And I tried hard. I beat thousands of dollars in a lot of brain cells on making on shape do everything. And it has too <laughs> much information. It won't work because on shape mm -hmm. needs the cam and manufacturing data. So unfortunately, or fortunately, we have to keep these team players, just like in a organization, working together where you have each of them doing their specialty. You don't want your sales manager out there trying to run your production. It's not going to play nice. And that's 
what we're running into with software too. And I, so I had to rebuild a lot of my geometry in each of the spaces. And at first I chafed at that, but as I've transitioned from, you know, through uh, SolidWorks and Onshape and Fusion 360 and, and now uh, SkySiv and Configure, all modeling spaces, I've learned that each of them have needs. And if you try to put too much in them, you're going to fall flat. So again, learn to play modular and learn to help your softwares play to their strengths and then find ways to tie them together. I don't know. Is That's that short great. Enough? I'm trying. Great advice. It's just like any great team, right? It, how it is. rare is it to find one all-star who can do everything well, right? Well, don't. So you, you can't can scale. Get, yeah. If you, you ever find one, they're scary because now, you, now you're going to have all your information siloed in one place. <laughs> Exactly. And I think that's great advice for any technology, because a lot of times you hear these software companies that say, oh, we can do all of this. We can do all of this. But you're, to your point, can you do it well? Can you do it to the degree of excellence that you want to be able to provide to your customer? So that is such great advice. Kurt, what do you think? Uh, you know, laser focus on the end goal, which is your customer need. Mm -hmm. Boy, guys, if there's yes. any take, I mean, there, there's just multiple, multiple mic drops today, <laughs> yeah. tons of value from a relentless entrepreneur, visionary. And so, you know, <laughs> you don't want your sales manager on operations. That was another goal. That is so true. I can okay. tell you, I've worked with a lot of sales managers. You do not want that. <laughs> We've got, hey, OpenMade drops a note here. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. This is really amazing. Again, guys, mm -hmm. we're over the top of the hour. If you're just joining us, we're, we're here with Travis Jordan. We've got uh, Mike Henderson here today. We're at MT Solar out in Montana, and we're going through a high level, just a wonderful configurator tool. Mike, do you have more that you want to show us here? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, as Travis mentioned, there are a few entities involved in our configurator. I, I'd probably say there's four separate teams that have, have built this. And, um, uh, we're at this. We're at this point now. I, th I think we we just finished version 1.2 of this stage this week. Just launched where we're going to have some maps and some some CAD drawings available for the customers so they can actually drop this on their location. Mm -hmm. And we've been working on that for months. Um, but really, the next step in this process after you get the visualization of what you're going to purchase is to move on to the the true e-commerce section of it where you can get a price and, and, and you know and complete the purchase and so that would be the next step here and so we got this button here proceed to quote <clears throat> and so what's happening now is uh, a custom product is being created in our e-commerce store for this for this customer for their for their uh, their project um, and it takes a little bit of time uh, to prep it, and you yeah, can see we're kind of going through. Off, I mean, this is like the, this is version 1.0 right there, and it's pretty crude. We're still working our way through trying to get CAD regenerated. So. But look at this: a custom product is being created. A new web page is being created just for this product, and you can add this custom product to cart. Yep, that is incredible. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm, I know I'm like massively cheerleader on this, but I just did. It's pretty remarkable here. I, I, I just have to just, you know, point it out. So keep going. This is cool. Yeah. So this is this is the final spot where they can they can see their their product. They can save it. You know, our our sales cycle is really long. So at this point, they're they're going to save this and then they're going to go talk to their customer or they might need to go talk to the local permitting office or there's, there's a lot this this product might not sell for 90 to 120 days. Our quotes are valid for 120 days, if that gives you an idea of how long the sales cycle is. So mm -hmm. let's just stop um, there. This works for long sales cycles. How many people out there think that, oh my gosh, e-commerce is just, you're going to click and buy. Mm -hmm. This is working for people that have, you know, need 90 to 120 days to get everything set up, permitted, all of that before they can purchase. And it's, it works, right? Like, you can do this if you have a long sales cycle. You can do e-commerce if you have a long sales cycle. That should not be a deterrent. Yeah. Yeah. You might show them some of the advanced things if you scroll down there, Henderson, if that's on your yeah. list. Yeah. So they can always go back to their 3D model from this, mm -hmm. this product. And, 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 and potentially they can share this with their customer, too. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, we give our, our, our solar uh, industry professionals uh, a, a a price 
that you know is 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 discounted from the MSRP price. And so um, when they're logged in, they can see their the price that they get. Um, but if they were to share this link with their customer, they could view the product at the MSRP price. So it kind of can help protect them on that level as well. Okay, uh, Mike, I, I have to interject right there. More pure brilliance right there. So Travis, I, I, the B2B space manufacturer, I know it's constantly e-commerce, the disruption, disrupting my channels. Mm -hmm. What you guys have done, apps, my, man, hats off to you. I'm applauding you. This mm -hmm. is fantastic. You're allowing your customer, your distributor to work with their customer. So now not only is this a tool for your B2B space, this is also a great tool for the end user or the consumer. Travis, can you walk us through that process? Was that an immediate? Was that kind of a gradual? How did you come up with that slice of, of genius there? I was the sale. I mean, I was the installer. I mean, it's so I built mm. my needs. And when you're sitting there at the kitchen table with the customer, the customer wants to know what are they getting in their front yard? They're going to live yeah. with this thing for 40 years. And they want to know what's it going to look like. And I'm only going to be there for four days. I mean, I, I don't care what it looks like. It was all about, <laughs> it's all about finding that way to, to communicate this data on down the chain and get them pretty pictures. And that's why I always drove for, I want to see it at exactly the tilt it is. I don't want a configurator that kind of approximates maybe what it might be. I want a pretty picture that's exactly what they're going to get down to the bolts and nuts. And it's taken us 10 years to get there. Yeah, it's it's yeah. taken a long effort to, to you know, start that. hacking that early. I mean, at least at least give them 20 options and then start narrowing it down oh, oh, to that holy grail of exactly what they're getting. Yeah. Yeah. So even even playing the role, guys, for manufacturing. Oh, my gosh, Travis. I knew we were, we were going <laughs> to geek out really hard. Hey, we've got Inger here today. This is incredible whitney houston that blows my mind also thinks of my former employer and comparatively mm -hmm. short quote validity validity despite the long sales cycle mm -hmm. john buglino my friend says a, a configurator and a price are you kidding yeah. me look all right michael let's keep it going what else you got here okay so there's some a few things here in the product they there's a file they can download which has all the extensive uh, calculations and information. Yeah, I open that for him, Henderson. It'll Should I open that up? Yeah, you probably ought to. <laughs> kind of a, um, just so yeah. people get a little idea to play their mind on that. That okay. engineering is a little bit. This nuts. is so mind bending, right? Like this people out be. there should be listening can just, this is like, think of the possibilities. If you're a manufacturer, think of the possibilities of how you could build this into your business. Yeah. Just and, scroll and, fast, and look at like, the time it's taken to build it, but what that time, that time investment, how that's going to pay off long term for your customers. It's just huge. So this is just engineering speak. So this is what you yeah. give to your engineering and permitting people. We really don't expect our customers to know anything about it. It actually causes us grief to let our customers have it because they have too many questions. <laughs> but in the long run, it helps them because they can start to submit it to their engineers and the ones who do understand it, understand the way we're doing the calculations. But there's load calcs and scenarios for every single member in the entire mount in every single scenario. We're, we're working wind and snow load combinations for every point of the compass, every tilt. Every, I mean, there's just like foundation stuff, uh, just bazillions of calculations that SkySiv is doing for us. And you're seeing their branding, all that. Yeah, here's some good, good so, Friday afternoon uh, yeah. maths for you. Don't, don't, so don't, you my know. question for you on this is how accurate is this <laughs> to the end result? Uh, garbage in garbage out but no this is as data this is data driven as you can get i mean we just yeah. e everything that we can calc we calc and this is mm -hmm. real time accurate so we're, yeah. we're not cheating anything everything is actually doing calcs real time for that load for that site for that scenario there is no there's no table based there's no table lookup there's no approximations it's real time lookup of real time data on real time calcs based on the latest version of the software and then stored to that product so that 90 days from now, we don't have to re-engineer that or redo it. It's locked into that product and stored there mm -hmm. with them so that we can go back and get that stamp later. How about, how about this comment for you, Travis? My dear friend, Vale, I have e-commerce <laughs> envy. 
How cool is that? They can download a CAD file too. Are you kidding me? John Buglino, Control plus P, yeah. hands to the engineering team. So, so I will throw one note in there. You notice that that thing was stored, that PDF was stored on Amazon AWS. And I will tell you that if you want to go down this journey, find yourself some good, a good web development team who's mm -hmm. willing to help you store some data to tie all the pieces together. And that's probably your biggest key. Yeah. Um, you can find all these pieces that'll build the separate stages, like I was saying, but you need that team leader that can bring it together. So either, you know, you as a founder have to be somewhat the CTO or you have to hire a web development company who can play CTO for you. But then that's I think that's the best way to do it. There may be a manufacturer comes together with this and wants to come figure out how to do it right. But yeah, of software, software manufacturer. But I still think you're probably best to build a team. Um Interesting. Yeah. But we're using AWS. We're using an AWS server for that, that we that we control ourselves to store all the data. So the data is not, that way we don't let stuff just, just get disenfranchised and stuck with everybody. We, I'm kind of like really picky about controlling my data. And so we do use an AWS server to suck everything together and hold it under my, in my own database. I don't want to geek too far, but, but keep control of your data. You own this data. You're the manufacturer. You're in charge. You're the owner of your company. You're the owner of your e-commerce stack. You need to own your data also. And so a certain mm -hmm. piece of it you need to own. And it's just like setting up your team on anything else. You, you need to own your managers. Your managers own their people and, and set it up accordingly. Another drop the mic moment. I, <clears throat> this one, we need to savor the flavor of the strawberry rhubarb <clears throat> pie, Kurt. You need to own your data. Own, own your, data. your data. So good, man. And here it is. You got your price. You can add it to the cart, and they can they can log in and access this anytime when they're ready to buy. They, just, yep. they can, can buy. complete the purchase late down the road once they're ready. But they can also get a, a freight quote. This is some giant chunks of steel that we're shipping across the country, and so they can. Kind this of is not out. a UPS quote, folks. Yeah, this is not. <laughs> that, that, that freight quote is live. You're not using you uh, You're not using flat rate USPS, right, Travis? No. <laughs> I mean, let's thousand it. pound coffins. I mean, they look like an Egyptian sarcophagus. They're, they're huge. <laughs> so. so I just have to say, freight shipping is such a hard thing to calculate in e-com. So this is yeah. all real live time plugged yeah. into your your yeah. shipping carrier. Their yeah. rates. We found it. We found a good a good technology company that has a lot of experience in in mm -hmm. freight and um, helped What's us. What's their name again? Henderson. It's yeah, on right now. Inature. Inature. Yeah, Inature Technologies. Another yeah. good shout out to them. They're probably the only yeah. guys. Paul Burkhead and his partner. Yeah. Uh, Ollie are probably the only guys I know that know how to do freight right. Yeah. Um, on freight on the freight side. So again, Inature Technologies definitely shout out to them. Good yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, I think this is also just a testament of how important it is to have good partners and bring the right partners in, right? And because not, you know, like I'm sure that that was hard vetting out the right people to do it's this. Ridiculous! <laughs> I don't, if I had a penny <laughs> for the dead end street we went down, I would not have to work next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got to have that tenacity, right? You knew yeah. what you wanted, you had the vision of what you needed, and you weren't going to compromise on it. You know, that's finding the right partner. That's huge. Hey, partners. Yeah. We've got a great comment here from Jared. So, hey, where, where'd he go? There, there's Jared right there. Jared, thanks for joining us. Happy Friday to you, my friend. Those algos are intense. So impressive. Even starting out being able to give ranges. Yeah. You know what? I think that's a great yes. point. You touch on that, Travis. Yeah. So, guys, as a manufacturer, how many times are you like, hey, can you just give me a ballpark? Is it $10? Is it $100? Are we mm -hmm. talking 10000 You know, the ranges pricing with a configurator would help the customer and internal sales team. You know, that, Jared, thank you. I wanted to go there real quick, Travis. Good. How about on the internal side? Like, you know, folks that, uh, clients that we're working with that have their configurators, man, not only is it awesome as a sales tool, it's great for SEO purposes. Yes. It's also great for internal. Can you talk about what this has done for your uh, internal sales team as, as an internal tool? We make them use the same system everybody else has. You can't put an exactly. order in here without the same as a customer can. Right? Yeah. So, so they're great sentinels for our customer experience. Right. That's I mean, actually Canaries yeah. in the coal mine. Yeah. That's almost more cruel. It's almost that <laughs> bad sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Canaries in the coal <laughs> mine, right yeah. there. Right on the bottom of the cage. You better fix the process. <laughs> you let us know. That is. Awesome. I mean, such a commitment to simplicity, right? I mean, that's really great.
Hey, ha, um, and you know what? And we'll do this in one minute, but Val, Val's already dropping the standing ovation right now for you guys. <laughs> Great. It's so difficult. Don't on there. I don't know. Are you guys feeling the love yet? Are you feeling yeah. like, you know, your amazingness yet? I don't know. I feel like we haven't shared enough. How Man, cool we've got, this is incredibly important and enjoyable. So this is just fantastic. So, all right, guys, I want to be mindful of everybody's time. We're starting to yeah. wind down here a little bit. Mr. Henderson, is there anything else that you would like to show for folks with this configurator? This is really the, you know, kind of the end of the process here. The, the last step is they can either complete it with a credit card, an e-check, uh, check by mail. Mm -hmm. uh, we can send them a QuickBooks invoice. And, and the final stage is most common is just to save this right. as a quote into their account. Right. And they can, you know, they can come back and reference it later once they're ready to complete the purchase. So. Very nice. And really, to speak to somebody's point there earlier, you know, we've got so far to go yet. I mean, we're, yeah. we're a long ways from the end because we need to get a way better customer portal space where the customer can view all their documents. It's a long sales cycle thing, which is, it frankly stinks for e-commerce. I get it. I agree. Everybody's on board with this. It stinks for e-commerce. But they need to be able to store their documents there with CAD drawings. Somebody mentioned CAD drawings and CAM drawings and some of that for manufacturing. We're still having to do a little bit of manual process and on shape. Maybe we automate that. Maybe we don't. The extra review in there for a human isn't always bad. But you know what? There's just a lot left here with the customer portal and account side that, yeah, we're not done yet. It's never done. It will never be done. Yeah. 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 yeah it's well, it's true. nice. Nice to hear that. That was one of my questions. What's next for MT Solar? And it sounds like just continuing to just improve this experience is really what you're looking to do and make it as easy for your customers as possible. Mike, what do you, what, you know, I'd love to just talk a little bit more about you're the brand marketing guru at MT Solar and tell us like, what, what is it that you're just loving about your role on the team and the vision that Travis is cultivating there? What do you see looking ahead for MT Solar and, you know, what, what gets you juiced up and fired up about? what it is that you're part of. Well, I, I think hopefully you've gathered that Travis is really committed to the customer experience. You know, the whole, mm -hmm. whole product is built on improving their experience. And so um, it's exciting for me. It's something I can I'd be really proud to present and to try to mm -hmm. tell the story of. And, um, you know, once, once we get someone to try the, the product, they, they, they convert their, they become loyal instantly. And they're like, why didn't I do this years ago? What have I been doing? And <laughs> that's really satisfying, you know, as someone that's trying to promote a brand, it's, it's, it's really satisfying and, and, and inspiring. So, so yeah, I think just continuing to find out what the customer needs and how we can improve their experience at every touch point with our, with our company, you know, and um, whether that's in the planning phase or whether that's in the sales process or in the final installation, uh, every, every one of those experiences is really important and improving that is, is key. So right now I'm doing a lot of content marketing, trying to build up a lot of information so a customer can really get what they need at the point they are in their, their journey, their customer journey. And, um, and that's it. That's a challenge. There's a lot of information. This is a high information product. Yeah. Uh, and the, and the, our customers are completely different spectrums of where they are in that journey and mm -hmm. try to identify where they are and to get them the information they need is, is, is my current challenge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. I mean, I can echo everything you said as, as, as a partner of yours from the beginning when Amy and I had the chance and the opportunity to talk to your customers one-on-one -on -one and just feel the enthusiasm and just the evangelism they have for the product for us as a partner it was really exciting to be a part of that to be a, a part of promoting that. And it's just been such a joy for us to be part of that journey. You know, one of our mantras is how can we help our customers profitably out teach the competition? And so I think, you know, everything that you're doing, Mike, in terms of just really positioning yourself as educating, helping them understand, even through this, this configurator, that's what you're doing. You're educating them on the process and helping them. And um, so yeah, we're just, we just love being a part of it and what you're doing there. And Amy, I want to turn it over to you. You, you know, want to give you a chance to talk a little bit about how you and Mike have been working together on the content marketing side and maybe share a little bit about some of the strategies that you've been developing and helping to help build out some of this content. Yeah, 
I think it goes all goes back to what Travis and, and Mike have been saying this whole time, like everything has been about the customer. And so mm -hmm. what we've really done is just try to work with Mike to identify what the installers and the customers need and then do some subject matter experts of which there are many, both on your team mm -hmm. and your installers and get the information, which I think is really great. That comes from the installers that are currently doing it and to be used by the installers that are maybe newer to the process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then just working to make sure it's really helpful content for the the customer and then also for Google and the the AIs out there <laughs> that, that yeah. are crawling the websites. But yeah, I think it's finding that marriage of usefulness and searchable. Well, Nicole, let's go here for a second before we lose people. To, we're coming in the bottom of the hour, wherever you're coming to us from, and maybe you're jumping on to the next call because we're going to give Travis last word here. But before we go there, <laughs> boy, if you've been, man, first off, was this just mind blowing or what? So I'm coming back to my dear friend, Val. Val sustaining ovation. So guys, if you've been sitting down for the past whatever hour it's been, it's a great opportunity. We're, we open up a jumpy jacks. If you want to jump right up, <laughs> <laughs> and how about give Travis and yes. Mike Henderson just a standing ovation on Amazing. just brilliance, inspiration, mm -hmm. man. Like I have chills. I'm ready to run through a wall right now. <laughs> this is like this is just so exciting. Look at what manufacturers can do. Yes. And when we think about manufacturers are like behind the curve or not tech savvy. Boy, we just dispelled that myth right here, live in action on manufacturing e-commerce success. So, Travis, why don't you take us home, your vision, future for MT Solar, what, what's ahead of us on the horizon? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got, we've got a, good, a good run here for working straight with our customers. And there's, you know, future products we need to develop. And, you know, a big one has just been building teams. That's, that's such an important part. And we've got a wonderful team uh, in each of the spaces. And Henderson, big shout out to him for heading up our team on the branding and, and whole website stuff. He's been working with me for what, almost 15 years now, kind of wow. on different projects and, and here and there. And when he was finally willing to jump in. I was as a serial entrepreneur. I've <laughs> been involved in a few, a few of his so ideas. And uh -huh. I, I tend to leave things. I'm always looking for the next big horizon and, and always playing the visionary role and I need so many of these great people to come along behind and help uh, help flesh everything out. And I've been blessed with a, a bunch of really good people on on all the different teams. You know, sales and and Henderson on marketing, and and we've got Mike Gillen and Chance over in production that help finish that out. And of course, my partner Don Woods, who takes care of all the financial stuff, um, keeps us keeps us on the straight and narrow. Uh, which some of us just don't do a good job at all. Those. But nobody can do everything well, so. We got a no lot of uh, hopefully coming with with our mounting structures. Uh, we've been hearing some good feedback from our customers with some good. some more features they'd like, and so we'll start trying to bring them into the into that always more. lean manufacturing. Wow, what a journey! Mike Gillen's been bringing us through the lean manufacturing space, mm -hmm. trying to get more machining implemented, uh, just kind of to firm up the space where we're at, continue to improve the quality of the product and the customer experience. Man, what a journey. There's always something to work on. So much fun. <laughs> always something. Hey, so Whitney says, this was awesome. And Gary Wood says, love the strawberry rhubarb pie. So, <laughs> old joke that we do every week here, Mike and, and Travis. We just, we just, when, when somebody says something that's just a slice of brilliance, it's just like Nicole's Aunt Barb strawberry rhubarb pie, mm -hmm. man. Like, that was just savor the flavor. So, Nicole, <laughs> let's start winding down and close it out. And so, first off, what so much to unpack here. I've like I have a full yeah. page of notes. Simplicity, laser focus on the end goal, which is your customer need. Mm -hmm. You know, build that team. Travis, I love what you just said. You know, about like, hey, you know what you're good at. You're the visionary, and you're just building that killer team behind you. Yeah. delegating and just, you know, getting the all-stars, rock stars behind you to, to make the dream come true. You just, you know, the technology piece. Guys, if you came in late, boy, just a great – hey, Don – Don says, hey, Gary Wood, that strawberry rhubarb pie with a little ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Don. Yeah, that's part of Don Woods. So. Big shout out to Don. Strawberry rhubarb pie. But, um, yeah. And Michael says, hey, great insights, understanding potential issues with implementation is crucial. Mm -hmm. Crucial. The crescent wrench not only not always works. So that was just another slice of brilliance there. So, Nicole, why don't you take us home and let's let's 
let's wrap things up. Yeah, there were so many great moments. I love what you said, Travis, about simplicity is the valley on the other side of complexity. <laughs> and I think for so many of us that are in the messy middle, wherever we are, just, you know, what, whatever business you're building, whatever team you're on, right? Mm -hmm. When you're in that messy middle, it feels so complicated. And you just, like cool. Travis said, you just got to keep pushing through and just really be as tenacious as he's been about trying to get to that other side and try to make it as simple as possible. And um, yeah, I think this is just such an inspiring story about just what's possible. You know, I mean, here you are, Travis, you're, you're you don't have an engineering background, yeah. you know, and you just were tenacious about trying to figure it out, learn everything you can and get the right partners involved, you know, and really just relentless about it. And so I think that's a great example to anyone out there that really nothing can stop you. If you have a vision, if you have something that you want to achieve and you have a clear vision of where you want to go, then it's just a matter of tenaciously getting the people in the right place and committing to just really diving in and figuring out as much as you can. Cause you figure, you know, Travis, think of all you've learned from the engineering perspective, I'm sure. Yeah. You keep to make it work. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I think this is just a great example to so many people. I appreciate you sharing your story and your inspiration and Mike, it's so amazing to be able to work with you and see how you're helping to bring this to life too. Um, and your part in it is just so huge and so critical in that customer experience. So well done to both of you. It's such a yeah. pleasure to have you guys on the show and to get to work with you regularly. is such a yeah. joy. So, and it, next it month, a, I can't wait to come see you. I'm coming. I'm going to knock on your door <laughs> oh, yeah. and you, you have no choice in the matter. I'm coming. I'm, awesome. uh, you better let me in or else. So. <laughs> so here, we want pie with ice cream. Well, well, well warning. So, hey, we got a great job, folks. Mm -hmm. So, again, guys, thank you. Thank you to everybody in the chat box. Boy, we just appreciate you yes. week in and week out for joining us. We just we love bringing just incredible, inspiring mm -hmm. entrepreneurs like Travis, great marketing gurus like our friend Mike. Mike, we met a couple of years ago coming through, you know, our oh. training sessions. And so it's just wonderful, you know, riding the journey with you the past couple of years. Amy, yeah. thank you for joining mm -hmm. us, my dear friend. It's always an honor and privilege mm -hmm. to share the stage with you. Nicole, mm -hmm. man, was this good. So, so guys, good. we're going to close out. Travis, Michael, hang out with us for one second. Yeah. And guys, what we love to close out with, just be someone's inspiration, man. Yes. Just go out and be someone's inspiration, just like Travis, just like Mike. Mm -hmm. Go out and keep crushing it. We will see you next week. Have an amazing, incredible weekend. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate Thanks. you. Thanks. See you. Mm -hmm.